but but I wanted to get to uh, discussing the program so that people can see how really straightforward it is. Get over here and see what you do have there. Uh, first of yeah. all, we have to know what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get rid of this large um, combination of things, which is the real carcinogen. We have been thinking that the carcinogen is some small item like PCBs or benzene or estrogen even, uh, something like that. And that all together, they give you cancer. And that's why we have this long list of, of carcinogens uh, in Prop 65 for California and the, the agency, the international agency called IARC, I-A-R-C, International Agency for Research in Cancer, they have long lists of carcinogens also, but none of those are it. It happens to be this very big complex, and it starts out with polonium here on the left side. Uh, polonium is one of the most uh, mutagenic um, radioactive elements. I don't know if it's second to plutonium, but it's quite, quite close to it in producing mutations of the large kind uh, that make chromosomes break uh, or, or not be able to, uh, to separate very big uh, kinds of mutations, not simple little gene mutations. And that is attached to cerium. This is the, this is the real carcinogen here that causes everybody's cancer no matter what kind it is, whether it's solid tumor or, uh, or just loose cells, uh, no matter whether what, what variety it is. Uh, it always has this item in it, and this is what causes the, the whole cancer uh, uh, story for a person where you, where you uh, have too much HCG in you, which is uh, human chorionic gonadotropin, and you've got way too much BCL2 relative to BAX, and you've got um, human growth hormone much to, uh, to excess, and you've got way too much DNA um, operating, uh, and, and many other mutations. Uh, in fact, uh, if you have a cancer at different organs, you'll often have different mutations uh, too, but there are, they are numerous. But this is the item responsible for it. Starts with polonium, and that is attached to cerium. Cerium is attached to the toxic item in, uh, in our water that I mentioned, um, that being uh, the disinfectant that is added to our drinking water just before it gets distributed to our houses. The original disinfectant chlorine gas is not it. It's the sodium hypochlorite product, and it's not the sodium hypochlorite itself either. It's uh, potassium ferrocyanide. There is also potassium ferricyanide, spelled with an I. Uh, here you can see the difference. Here's, here's the product with potassium ferricyanide. That doesn't cause the cancer, but this one here is potassium ferrocyanide. That is the one that causes the cancer. And this, these cyanides are added to the water to protect the pipes. It's mm -hmm. called an anti-scalant or an anti-corrosive uh, because, you know, when you're making bleach, that's a very corrosive substance, and you would want to protect the pipes. Perhaps they could be protected by changing to plastic and not having to worry about the corrosion effect, mm -hmm. but mm, that hasn't been done. So we, are, we have had these things, either ferrocyanide or ferricyanide, in our water for many, many years, perhaps going back to the 20s and 30s. Th this ferrocyanide attracts alkylating agents. Uh, alkylating agents are things that can attach to the DNA. It alkylates the DNA. 
and they're simple substances like you find in onions, garlic, and mustard. They're the very um, uh, sharp substances that make your eyes water and taste sharp. Those are the alkylating agents, and they were uh, discovered to be very mutagenic uh, around the 1950s already. Some of the first things known to cause mutations. And they uh, all come under the heading of war gas. These were the things that were first used uh, to cause um, uh, lacerations and uh, terrible ulcers of the skin. And um, so it was used in as a maybe the first biological substance in war. Wow. World War One and World War Two. As in mustard gas. Yes, mustard gas. Wow. Mm -hmm. And now, Those incidentally, substances. it's used, isn't it, to, in the uh, formation of some of the stuff they use for chemotherapy? Yes, if you want a killer, of course, you would want the most destructive killer. And they are the most destructive killers. Mm -hmm. So it's like using radiation to destroy cancer cells when radiation was even the cause of it. Here in with polonium, you see that radiation is really the basis of uh, the whole cancer phenomenon. And yet you can use radiation to have such a killing effect that it kills all the cancer cells too. Wow. Okay, so we've got the polonium, cerium, and the ferrocyanide, and, the ferrocyanide, and, potassium and then the alkylating agents come from either onion, garlic, or mustard. Onion, garlic, or mustard. Right. and. Uh, they are actually metabolites, the results of the parasite Fasciolopsis buski. Hmm. Okay. And that is what I actually found first. The polonium I only found about two years ago. So I found this parasite first in every cancer patient. Um, see, if I can, see if I can get a picture of that. This is what it looks like. Little guy here. Uh, uh -huh. I'd like you to show, I'd like to show you it's it's egg strings so that you can, um, See if uh, I can that up here. here are its egg strings hanging out of its body. It's about three quarters of an inch long and it has burst and that's why those egg strings are hanging out. But you can see it's a bit jelly-like. Hang on a second, let me see if I can. It's in formaldehyde so it's perfectly safe there and of course it came into the toilet bowl. Boy, I can see it now. I can see all those little strings. And yes. That's, and that's a fasciolopsis busky. Yes. And if it drops into the toilet bowl, you'll just see little black threads, of which are these egg strings, and uh, that's how you would recognize it. Other, there are some other uh, parasites that also uh, burst and are rather large like this, but this is a real mm. busky. Wow. How did you ever find that as a one of the cancer-causing parasites? Oh, that's just an that's accident. A, really? Just an accident about 15 years ago. Serendipity and action. Yes, mm -hmm. because yeah. I was loaned a parasite uh, kit, a parasite uh, set uh, by a dentist who, who was in the neighboring town, an alternative dentist, and he mm -hmm. had just, he had made it uh, as we all had in our parasitology years, mm -hmm. uh, and he still had his. And he lent it to me, and I was testing for everybody for about 75 or so parasites. Uh -huh. And uh, having a cancer patient who wasn't there for their cancer, they were there for nutritional consulting. Uh, and they, that they happened to have this parasite, which I had never uh, seen in a in a uh, before in a in an American person, uh, but shortly, maybe two days later, uh, uh, I had an, another cancer patient also there just for nutritional consulting, and they also had that parasite, that unusual parasite that uh, I had been taught you would only see in in China and uh, and. Uh, uh, tropical countries. And here it was, either in the larval stage or whatever form it was, but it belonged to Fasciolopsis busky. 
and then, uh, and then there was still a third case, and after that I thought that I had to pursue this because the coincidence was too great. It was in three cancer patients and not in about uh, 50 others of different kinds of, with different kinds of problems, and I thought that was uh, uh, compelling. And I pursued it and found the, uh, the uh, herbal recipe that could kill it. And when it was killed, they returned to their oncologists and uh, found that the oncologist was saying that they had improved greatly with whatever they had been given and, and, the, and they no longer had uh, a malignant lesion. It was now benign. And that is what they came back to me with. And I thought, that's very nice. Maybe this is really uh, the cause. It's really significant. Yes. So uh, soon enough, though, they would have a recurrence of this parasite because they would not keep on uh, killing it. And we had no idea where they all were and how many there were and where they were really coming from. So when it recurred, they would get their cancer back. Uh, and after we killed it a second time, it would be gone again. So after going through about three cycles like that, for each one, I thought this is compelling. This has something to do with causing cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the rest is discussed in the books. Uh, and